first day of a beautiful month, September 1st, 2023. Welcome to Somalia's premier number one station for news and updates. I'm your presenter, Abdurrahman Yusuf. Tonight, we have a couple of stories lined up for you, but first, let's take a look at the stories that are making our headlines. Red Cross says 43 bodies have been collected in a week from clashes in disputed Somali city. AU mission urges world to back Pew's building process to stabilize Somalia. Somali army chief Bruce Moral as troops get army promotions in Middle Shabele region. Glad to have you back. Now let's delve into a full bulletin. The International Committee of Red Cross says 43 bodies have been collected in the past week from the front line of the latest fighting in disputed city in Somaliland. The ICRC in a statement Friday on Friday said further 10 wounded people have been taken to hospitals in the past week by the Somali Red Crescent Society amid clashes that have continued for months in and around Las Arnold. In a recent statement issued on Friday, the International Committee of the Red Cross ICRC revealed that they have collected a total of 43 bodies over the past week from the front lines of the ongoing conflict in Las Arnold, a disputed city. Additionally, the Somali Red Cross Society has transported 110 wounded individuals to hospitals during the same period. The clashes, which have persisted for several months, have escalated tensions in and around Las Anod, with the ICRC's statement refraining from identifying the deceased or assigning blame for the violence. Somaliland, having separated from Somalia approximately three decades ago, has been striving for international recognition as an independent nation. Its security forces have been engaged in protracted battle against clan militia groups that aspire to be part of Somalia. Among these groups, the Puntland state has long contested Las Arnold ownership with Somaliland. The relentless fighting has resulted in a mass exodus of hundreds of thousands of individuals from the region, while the exact number of casualties remain unknown. The ICRC has expressed concern over the widespread destruction of civilian infrastructure in Las Anod, the capital of the Seoul region. In response to the alleged images circulating showing the mistreatment of captured soldiers, Somaliland's government released a statement on Thursday condemn condemning such actions. Hundreds of individuals have been taken captive on both sides of the conflict during the recent waves of violence. The ICRC managed to gain access to 300 individuals held by the militias, marking their first visit to these captives. Among them, four wounded detainees were transferred to a hospital for urgent medical, medical care. It is worth mentioning that ICRC staff had previously visited captured militia forces in the capital city of Somaliland. Earlier this year, the Somaliland Defense Ministry refuted allegations that the army had targeted the main hospital in Las Anod with shelling. The conflict continues to escalate, posing significant challenges for the region and exacerbating the humanitarian crisis on the ground. The Africa Union Transition Mission in Somalia, ATMIS, has called on the international community to continue supporting the peace-building process to stabilize Somalia. ATMIS, rather, ATMIS Force Commander Samu Kidding said the world should back the peace-building efforts in key areas, including security force generation, lifting of the EMS embargo, capacity building, deployment of critical force enablers, and provision of predictable and sustainable funding for ATMIS and the Somali government. The international community has been urged to support the peace-building effort to stabilize Somalia by the Africa Union Transition Mission in Somalia, ATMIS. Sam Kidding, the commander of the ATMIS force, say that the world should support the efforts to build peace in several crucial areas, including the development of security forces, the lifting of arms embargo, capacity building, one of the predictable and long-term fundings for ATMIS and the Somali government. Or kidding, I stated that the AU forces have preserved their gains over the years by not losing any territory to Al-Shabaab in all sectors, thereby fulfilling their mandate of protecting civilians, UN agencies, an humanitarian organization among others. It is one thing to capture, but it's another to maintain. Atmis has consolidated all those gains, he said in a statement issued in the Somali capital of Mogadishu on Wednesday evening. After successful neutralizing Al-Shabaab in the Lower Juba, Lower Shabele, Iran and Middle Shabele regions, 
The Atmis Force Commander praised the Atmis Forces for conducting joint offensives with the Somali security forces in Galgadot region. Atmis, in collaboration with the UN and the Somali government, finished a technical evaluation of the first phase and is now preparing to withdraw an additional 3,000 troops according to Eke Okedi. The commander also retaliated Atmis' pledge of supporting the ongoing Somali-led military offensive against Al-Shabaab militants in order to ensure Somalia's peace and security before its departure in December 2024. In the first phase of the drawdown completed in June, Atmis withdrew 2,000 troops and handed over six military bases in compliance with the UN Security Council resolutions 2,628 and 2,670, 2022. Hid Shabele Regional President Ali Hussein Gudlabe Hussein, along with the country's army chief, General Ibrahim Sheikh Muhyiddin, the chairman of the military court, Colonel Shute, and lawmakers visited Somali National Army and local militia forces in Dulheim, located in the Middle Shabele region, on Thursday. The President of Hid Shabele Regional State, Ali Hussein Gudlabe Hussein, paid a visit to the Somali National Army and neighborhood militia forces stationed in Darunayn. A town in the Middle Shabele region, along with the country's army chief, General Ibrahim Sheikh Muhyiddin, the chairman of the military court, Colonel Shute, and lawmakers on Thursday. The army commander honored the soldiers in Durnaim for their commitment for protecting and assisting in liberation of several strategically vital areas in the area by promoting each of them by one rank during the visit. In addition, he promised to change the custom and raise the soldiers' pay in accordance with their rank. President Gulawe, help boost the army's morale by giving the commanders camels and advising them to step up their anti-Al-Shabaab operations in order to liberate the last remaining areas under the group's control. Sheikh Abdul Qadir Somo, a representative of the Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jamaa, along with other representatives among the army chief General Ibrahim Sheikh Muhyiddin, inspected the troops stationed in the Middle Shabelis district al Qadir village. The need to expedite military operation across the nation in response to a defeat suffered by the government army in Gilgadud region serves as the driving force behind this army. Following a fatal Al-Shabaab attack on soldiers in Oswein village on Saturday, reports state that Somali troops have evacuated Elder, Masagawi, Galat, and Budbud in the Gilgadud region. Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, the president of Somalia, vowed the military operations against Al-Shabaab will continue until a decisive victory is attained. Lovely viewers, that's all we are prepared for you tonight from our desk here in Mogadishu. I wish to thank all those who partook to make this news bulletin a success. Wherever you're watching us from, have yourselves a lovely night and be blessed.